Welcome back to the channel. There's a lot going on these days in the workshop. The right front floor panel needed to be partly removed, which goes along with repairing the usual door sill issues that almost any 105 suffers from. I also made up my mind to replace the front panel. It needed to go off to access the areas behind it, and there's not much to suggest that the old one would go in again. The reason to tackle the front of the car, she once had an accident, and I'm not sure I like the way it was repaired. The driver door, however, was a good one. Very little rust overall, just two small repair panels in the door base, almost not worth mentioning. The rest of it was all restored exactly along the lines of my first two films about doors. Door number three, though, was a completely different animal. I had a hard time at the first two doors locating these welding spots, so this time I burned off all the paint as sanding would just blend in the texture and make them even harder to find. Door number one and two weren't much damaged up here. This one, however, had started to disintegrate. And where I found a couple of lovely little holes last time, this time I had to deal with door bases made of brown crumbs. In my past projects, trimming the old panel in a way that the already manufactured repair panel would fall in place, it was a continuous challenge that I couldn't always master very well. So I went to the internet and I looked for a better method and I found one. Spectacularly! The guy I'm referring to is Fitzy from Fitzy's Fabrications in Australia. What he basically says is, tack weld the new part to the old one and cut them off together, but do it as much as possible under a 45 degree angle to give it some flexibility in aligning the welding seam and do it step by step to use the remaining tack welds to keep the repair panel in place as the butt welding proceeds. Wow, this works! Fitzy explains it very well in his videos, so no more word from me. I put the link down in the description. Did you see it falling in place with a snug fit? Wait a second, I show you again. So cool! And now you just peel the old panel out and you're good. Welding this repair panel to the door frame, I did my very best, but still I had to weld to spots that have already been somewhat corroded and thinned out. I'm talking about the sections between the circular upstands. 
And though this lightly rusted steel still has many years of life in it, it's difficult to weld to it. Cutting it out was not an option either, because it would have meant to manufacture the circular upstands, which would have taken me ages. Mind you, for a part nobody, including myself, will ever see again in the coming decades. What I did is, I welded as much as I could and used hard soldering for the rest. It can nicely be observed here what the heat does to the panels, but without the door skin this area is flexible and therefore it will simply spring back in its old position when the heat is gone. Würdest du das machen mit dem Zudrehen? Ja, gerne. Jetzt? Ja. Und warm die noch? Mhm. Jetzt darf gut passen. Dann schauen wir mal. Tag wird kommen, da brauche ich eine Abkantbank. Ja, wenn du noch ein paar Blechen bauen willst, dann schon, ja. So geht's. So, das ist richtig.
Now, I did all my butt welding in the rear part of the repair panel and I was rather happy with it. The front part, however, refused even the most careful welding. What I had held for surface rust, in fact, was already porous from rust and I had to swallow the bitter pill, cut it all out and make a repair panel for the repair panel. When things go south in such a way, your best friend is patience. Relax, as Clarkson says. In my eyes, the best way to butt weld very thin panels is to keep the gap small. That of course brings the risk of warping, but I worked very slowly and cooled the welding spots with air in between and it all went fairly well. Heat as such is not a problem here. The problem is the inner panel getting hot while the outer is still cool. Therefore, especially at the beginning, when there were no heat bridges between the repair panel and the rest of the door, I really worked in slow motion. You saw me doing a fair amount of grinding in this movie and unfortunately at some point my beloved 40 year old Bosch grinder which I inherited from my father and that I had restored only last summer it went belly up. You know, I actually prefer beating my own repair panels, but in that case, this entire door base was rotten and I got me one of those prefabricated ones that you get at Alpha Spare Part dealers. They never really fit and neither did this one, but doing an own and better one would have required me hammering for a day or so, and so I took the easy way out. The corners of my door were in surprisingly good nick and so I decided to only use the middle section of the repair panel. And here's the first major problem with accuracy of fit. The cross section looks like from a panel of a different car and that's the best thing I can say. I'm aware that I'm creating a low spot here and I must do something to avoid water gathering at this point, but I shall cross that bridge when I'm getting there.
everything tacked together with a couple of spots. I tested the door in the car and it was good to do the final welding. Welding it all up, I went easy and cool, literally by blowing air onto the fresh spots to make sure that the seam never exceeded a temperature that would still allow to touch it with the hand. Eventually, for the most part, a crisp butt welded seam came forth with proper through weld and also the hand beaten transition welded nicely. However, doing butt welding, things can always go wrong quite massively. At the very beginning of this project, I tested hard soldering at the front corner of the door to see whether closing some minor rust holes would work this way. It did very well, but in the heat of the moment, I sanded it all down to look nice and neat and I took far too much material off, leaving the sheet pretty much thinned out. With the remaining thickness of say 0.5 millimeters, it's almost inevitable that the arc would blow holes in. If this happens to me, and I can tell you I hate it when it happens, I concentrate on adding material only to the firm side of the seam, in this case the black replacement panel. Create some melt there and smear it over to the weak side, barely melting it up at all. There are days when it works. For the grinding process, this time I very much concentrated on not exaggerating again and instead of sending it flush, I left half a mil of the bead protrude. I'm quite confident that I could have left well enough alone, but I thought that some silver solder would round it off. <laughs> 